So I wanted to emphasize, so there's two things that I wanted to emphasize here. First of all, it doesn't matter whether there's a hydrogen or not. All that matters is getting the number four pointing away from you. And also, um, a lot of people get messed up when the number four priority is in the plane of the page. Um, here, the number four was easy because it was uh, on a wedge or a dash, but people get messed up when it's in the plane of the page. But the method that we use works in both of these cases. If the number four either starts on a wedge or it starts in the plane of the page, in either case, the best thing to do is to make a swap so that it's pointing away from you. Uh, and then we can use the method we talked about here. Um, there, there's some other methods that unfortunately only work when the number four is on a wedge, but they don't work when it's in the plane of the page. But the method, this method is best, I think, because it always works, uh, either when the number four starts in a wedge or when the number four starts in the plane of the page. Okay, so those are these basic ideas. And here's a good notation for attacking these problems. Uh, and all the, these, were, these work for pretty much any diagram, so these would also work for Fisher diagrams. Mm -hmm. But most people have more trouble with these diagrams. Well, I think this was the situation that you were asking about, what to do when there's a double bond. Mm -hmm. I have trouble um, with these. Okay. Well, um, the best thing to do here is to actually, some, the previous problems I gave you, I think, were very easy to find the priorities. So we kind of did it in our head. But when it's not easy, there's a, a good method for assigning the priorities. First of all, I would put in a dot to show, well, first of all, we should put in an asterisk to show where the stereo center is. So we'll put in an asterisk to show the stereo center. And then we should put in four dots. A dot for each of the directly connected atoms. So here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot, and here's a dot. I'm going back to the first example for a second. So we put in a dot for each of the directly connected atoms. And um, then, next to each dot, we list the three atoms that it's connected to. Well, this isn't connected to anything, and this is not connected to anything. But what are the three atoms that this uh, atom is connected to? Um, another carbon and two H's. That's right, the two hidden hydrogens. And how about here? That's right. If necessary, you should actually draw in those hidden hydrogens if you're having trouble making that list. But there should be three things. Um, well, I think it was pretty obvious here that the bromine was number one and the hydrogen was four. But how do we break the tie between these two over here? Well, it's by making these lists. And then you can see this carbon beats this hydrogen. All right, so when it's difficult to assign the priorities, it's a really good idea to put in the asterisk, put in the four dots, and for any atoms that are tied, put in the list of the three things they're connected to. I actually do this because I added that second language book. That's right. That's so where I got that from. Yeah, yeah. So I do this, but I, I on the double bonds, right. can't figure out. So let's apply that here. <laughs> now, I think it's pretty obvious. So we'll put in the four dots. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Now, it's clear that the hydrogen is the number four priority, mm -hmm. but there's a tie between the other three dotted atoms. So let's list the three things that they're each attached to. Well, let's start with the easy ones. What are the three things that this is attached to? Carbon and two hydrogen. And how about this one? Uh, three hydrogens. Is there a rule for why you list the carbon first on that other one? You always like, should list them from best to worst. Best to worst. That's what I thought. Yeah. I wasn't sure that was just. Yeah, that's a good question. That's not optional. The method will give you the wrong answer if you don't list these from best, best to, worst. to worst. So if I had listed them like this, that could mess me up. Yeah. All right, now we have to list the three atoms that this carbon is attached to. But there seems to be a difficulty because there seem to be only two atoms that it's attached to. Of course, we never go backwards back towards the stereocenter. We're not listing the stereocenter because everyone's attached to the stereocenter. We're listing the three outward atoms that we're attached to. Well, the trick is that you treat um, a double bond as two separate bonds. Okay. So it's attached to a carbon twice, basically. That's right. So we just put two carbons in the list. That's all there is to it for dealing with uh, multiple bonds. That's you just list the carbon that you're attached to multiple times. That makes that one. And now, three. there's still a tie between the first atoms in these lists, but the second atom in this list beats this atom over here. So this must be number one. Mm -hmm. And clearly, this beats this list. This would be two, and this would be three. Yep. All right, and then what do we have? We don't need to make any swaps because the number four was already pointing away from us. Okay. okay. 
Um, maybe I'll give you one more example because this is uh, this is uh, does tend to be tested. What to do with the double bond? Yeah. Well, the key is to make your list of the three connected atoms and. Um, in order to get three atoms, we have to count uh, a double bond as two separate bonds. I think maybe I was going C, H, C and putting the second carbon on the bottom and that was what was messing me up. C, H. I wasn't listing them in priority within that. And you do have to list them from best to worst. That's right. That. 